Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. We will be starting the session in about two to three minutes as we allow others to be logging in to a pretty exciting session we've got going for you. Hi hey everyone, again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, the two of our presenters, good night. Uh, we will be joining, uh, kicking the session off in about one minute. We will be getting started in about 30 seconds. So thanks everyone for being prompt. We'll allow a couple of others to log in. Okay, everyone, we're going to get started. Uh, I'm Mitchell Klein, Executive Director of the Z-Wave Alliance, and I'd like to welcome you all to the fifth Z-Wave Alliance Virtual Academies Webinar Wednesdays, coming to you every Wednesday. That's why we call it Webinar Wednesdays. Anyway, um, for this week's event, we have strategies for successful smart home product design and manufacturing. Next week on July 1st, we'll be taking a break but we will be back with an exciting session on July 8th. And as always, we like to encourage you to reach out to us with any suggested topics, or even if you'd like to present one, we'd love to hear from you. Meanwhile, we are thrilled to welcome leading ODM IoT product manufacturer and Z-Wave board member Leaderson to our fifth webinar session. They will talk about strategies and considerations gleaned from years of experience designing and manufacturing for the world's leading smart home brands with many innovative products that you can be yours as well. Actually, you're gonna see them all coming up. From initial product design and production, you're gonna learn about the elements that make up a successful smart home product. We're happy to bring the director of IoT business development and famously good bad guy of film, and you may have seen him on an episode of House or, or Charmed, Michael Bailey Smith. Also, it's midnight for our other guests, so welcome them. Uh, that's R&D Director at Leaderson's Taipei X Lab Technical Center, Duncan Chang. Uh, that's where a lot of real in, uh, cool innovations are developed. Also, welcoming Senior Product Manager leading the sensor development, Joe Zhou. So this is a very talented team, and ladies and gentlemen, here's Michael Bailey Smith. Hello everyone. Um, before I get started, I just want to let you know that I have a bit of a cough. So if I cough a little bit, uh, uh, I'll get through it. Uh, and I've been tested, so I'm good. Just so I have a cough. So anyway, um, I want to hope, I hope everybody's having a great day or evening, wherever you're at in the world. And uh, again, my name is Michael Bailey Smith. I am the director of uh, IoT for in business development for North uh, for Leaderson in North America. And I wanna, before I get started, I wanna thank uh, the Z-Wave Alliance, uh, Mitchell Klein and Janet Collins for giving us the opportunity to talk to you guys about successful smart product design and manufacturing. So if you are ready, uh, let's get going. So Mitchell talked a little bit about uh, my crazy past and that makes it a little bit exciting for you, maybe. <laughs> uh, these are some of the roles that I've done in the past. Um, this is Super Freddy from the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. This is playing, uh, I was fighting Jean-Claude Van Damme in a movie called In Hell. Yes, I'm getting my butt kicked there. Uh, this is from House. 
this is from The Hills Have Eyes. Uh, this is Lucy Liu. Um, I was so excited that she saved me in this episode that I tattooed her on my chest. And that's a fake chest tattoo, of course. Um, I was Ben Grimm, the, the Thing in the Fantastic Four. Uh, this is where a video game where I played a pretty bad guy. Uh, it's called Fight Night. And a, a title character of a, a movie called Monster Man. Uh, I was actually Mr. Clean. That's at the Daytona 500 down in the pit. And that's the Mr. Clean car, which is pretty cool. And uh, I just did a film about a year ago called Miracle Desert. And yes, that's me at the Mojave Desert, buried from the neck down. I've done about 60 films, about 100 episodes of television, a bunch of uh, commercials and, and everything like that. So it was a fun ride. But now I work for an awesome company called Leaderson. And uh, I've been very blessed. And uh, so here we go. Let's talk about that a little bit, the company introduction. So Leaderson is the number one ODM in the world. Uh, we are number one in connected lighting, in traditional lighting, uh, and IoT products. And most manufacturers, they copy, and we don't. We're an innovator. We have over 1,900 patents. We have over 1,500 R&D um, engineers, as well as huge manufacturing space and workshops. Uh, our headquarters is in uh, Xiamen, China, which is an island just off the mainland, connected by three bridges and a tunnel. It's pretty remarkable. It's very uh, resort feel to it. And we have R&D there, as well as our headquarters. Shenzhen, we have an R&D center there. And in Taiwan, where Duncan's at, that's, um, that is where um, our X lab is at, where we do a lot of R&D in industrial design. Zhengzhou is where our main manufacturing base is, as well as Shenzhen. And we have branch offices in the United States, uh, UK, Germany, and Japan. Uh, so a little bit about our history. We started out with light sources, moved into light fixtures, and now we have full-on IoT solutions. And how that started was in 2000, actually my owner, Edder Lee, the Lee and Leaderson, um, he stood outside a light show in Hong Kong, I think it was, and said, hey, we make light bulbs. Got a customer, figured it out, and started doing CFLs. Went from there to doing LEDs in 2005, uh, started doing connected bulbs in 2011, doing fixtures for LEDs in 2013. We started building out our IoT competency and, and, and product line. In 2016, we became a Z-Wave um, Alliance member. 2017, we became a board member and actually won the Fast Lane Award for, um, for developing you know, a Z-Wave 500 series products at the time. So we were leading in that. And then uh, we became a one-stop shop where we offer not only app and cloud uh, for those uh, customers that, don't, that need that solution as well as full-on smart home solutions and smart building solutions. And then we've also just recently, last year, we changed our name from Leaderson Lighting to Leaderson IoT Technology. And the reason why we did that is because our owner, Edder, um, he's very innovative and forward thinking, and he knows that the world is going you know, to the way of IoT. So to be, with the, you know, to be aligned with that, we've changed our name to, to that as well. And then uh, we passed the first series of 700 series products for Z-Wave, which is pretty, pretty exciting. And also in 2020, which is really cool, is that we have launched uh, the development of our IoT Tech Town, which is in Zhengzhou. Um, it's a huge facility that we're building that has everything from housing our, our customers. It'll have a train stop as well as a bus station. And it's, it's pretty, it's all in enclosed campus, like a college campus almost, like going to like Apple or, you know, uh, Amazon, those places like Microsoft, same thing. Our competitive advantages are pretty remarkable. Our X lab, we do facial, uh, re facial recognition, gesture control, all done through uh, al algorithm development and, and uh, firmware uh, gesture zone, uh, predictive anal analytics, and all that stuff feeds back in not only to our, in, into our devices when it comes to sensors, into our cameras, into everything, controls. Um, and then uh, we, when it comes to customized firmware and antenna, we specialize not only in Zigbee, I mean Z-Wave, we do Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LoRa, and Thread. So we're on the forefront of all types of wireless technologies, and we have all of the capabilities of doing uh, antenna and RF testing, everything from anechoic chambers, to shielded rooms, to you know, RF signal testing. We also do our own modules, which is pretty remarkable. And we do combo modules. So we'll do like a, like a Wi-Fi Bluetooth or a Zigbee Bluetooth, ones that allow us to be able to do that. It's where um, it's more cost effective, uh, better quality because now everything is done in-house and a quicker time to market, which is really good for our customers. Uh, we do, we manufacture and export about 60 million pieces per month. And that's not a year, that's not six years, that's per month. And when you come to 
to Xiamen and to Zhengzhou and see our main manufacturing base, your jaw will hit the floor because to see that being done per month is pretty remarkable. The most of that is about, I'd say 85% of that is done through traditional lighting with bulbs and fixtures, but the rest of it is IoT and that is uh, growing exponentially. And like I said before, 90% of what we do is in-house. That's a great thing, again, uh, more cost effective, better quality and quicker time to market and tons of automated uh, production lines. We have our own, we develop our own robotics as well, which is really great. We actually have a little manufacturing base where we pull uh, product lines off, uh, uh, we'll duplicate that and then try to you know, uh, make that automated. It's pretty cool. Um, business models and how we work. We, we can do ODM, we do JDM, uh, we do OEM, and we do straight CM as well. Uh, we have an IDC team, which we talked about a little bit, that's based out of uh, the Taiwan area. These guys are remarkable. They come up with and design products that are just beautiful and ergonomic and, and innovative. And with that, that feeds back into our, our ODM business. When you give us a, a PRD or a spec, we can build that product. We also, for our white labeled products as well, that separates us from other manufacturers is not only can we do those originally designed products, but we can also have our own full line of products as well. And we do full line of products for smart home, uh, again, smart building, and we have our own app and cloud. Uh, quality assurance, top, uh, top shelf, uh, six sigma, we adhere to six sigma, six sigma standards, CNAS, uh, various IS, ISOs. We do pre-testing and wireless, uh, pre-testing and wireless testing for, <clears throat> for UL, FCC, CE, uh, EMC, the whole gamut. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we have about over 10,000 use cases that we can execute products against, which is pretty remarkable. And we have partnerships with various uh, certification and regulatory bodies to help us through this process. And then uh, local service or global service, we work operate in about 82 different countries. Uh, and we pride ourselves on local for local. What that means is that even though our headquarters is in China, and we have manufacturing as well, I didn't mention this, in, in, uh, in Thailand as well. Um, but with local, local, uh, we have FA, uh, FAEs, engineering sales, customer service. We only give that really that, that personal touch to our customers and don't feel like you're just dealing with someone that's overseas a long ways away. Um, so our production capabilities in IoT, we do, we have full on SMT uh, manufacturing bases. Um, everything is real time testing. Uh, we do I, uh, IC programming level, um, RF testing 100% off the line, assembly. We do flexible lines as well as automated lines, our whole product array from lighting, sensors, controls, cameras, uh, pairing. So we developed a test machines to do for preparing. That's becoming a big, uh, big thing nowadays is that when you buy a product to have it prepared and ready to rock and roll, and that's what we can do. We test the pairing functionality as well as get it prepared. And then also laser printing. So we're getting to the part of finishing up the product. We want to etch, etch the, the customer's brand uh, on, on that product. We, ha we handle that ability as well as packaging. So we have huge packaging, packaging capabilities, which really uh, saves our customers tons of money when it comes to, um, they don't have to outsource anymore. Uh, so next is, this is our white label product display. So lighting, we do everything from bulbs to fixtures, we use sensors, we want to come motion sensors, uh, we do sirens, keypad and key fobs. We do uh, door window sensors, water leak, smoke, smoke COs. Controls, we do smart plugs from around the world. We do thermostats, all the various types. We do switches, dimmers. We do scene controls. Uh, we do gateways, remotes, TRVs for the European uh, market, as well as for the water valve. Um, uh, and then we also do uh, range extenders. And for cameras, we do uh, floodlight cams, uh, pan tilt zooms, outdoor, indoor, more outdoor, uh, doorbell, and a very low cost camera that we're up for. So that's basically the overview of Leaderson and what we're doing. I'm now going to hand it over to Duncan, and he's going to talk about some specifics of, of Z Wave and between the 500 series and the advantages of the 700 series. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Duncan Chang. R&D director at Leaderson, responsible for uh, software and, and firmware team managing. And first of all, uh, many people just like me uh, approach uh, Z-Web that because uh, it's a highly uh, security level. Uh, it's perfect for a security kit. 
And recently, uh, we just launched the new security kit with 700 series. And during implementation and development, we find out uh, the different uh, differences between 500 and 700 series. And that is something I would like to share with you today. And please, next. Thank you. Yeah, uh, 700 series is the uh, ARM-based platform. It brings many benefits. First, uh, our engineer feel uh, really like the, it's a user-friendly uh, uh, start uh, starter kit and play uh, and uh, program framework. And our, our engineer are fam familiar with ARM. And, and, and it's tool. It's easy to use. Uh, actually, uh, actually, actually, in in Asia, uh, in this year, uh, student from from this, uh, college, they the the office, the uh, professor stopped teaching the eighty fifty one platform. They just uh, approach the um um platform right now. So uh, for those young developer, uh, it's very very useful. Yeah and easy to use for, for them. And secondly, we uh, like that it, it's a uh, high integrated and intuitive studio tools. It definitely uh, improved the work efficiency. And we always can get a quick re response uh, from the, the support team. Uh, again, I share some experience uh, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, we, we got a lot, a lot about technical issue that, that because we, we just uh, start approaching the 700 series and I, and they, they also can they, they just uh, email us uh, in 24 hours that because the time zone that not, not just I uh, like uh, you uh, United States where you from Europe you can just uh, dial your number but uh, in, in Asia that we, we we more use the email, email to contact this and it, it, it can answer us very quick quickly yeah and next I would like to talk about the energy saving thank you next As you, as you see from the table and the figures, the leverage uh, power consumption power consumption is uh, four times less than before. It's a huge upgrade. The nodes uh, show on the upper right area. Uh, this number from a uh, uh, door window sensor is a product level uh, and, and test by our lab. We, we 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 uh, test the the 500 and 700 series. We, we can see uh, we we operate uh, uh, 30 times a day, or 50 50 times, or 100 times a day, and we we can compare about as 500 and 700 series, and 700 uh, series uh, can can help and extend the uh, lifetime to over than uh, 19 years. Of course, we, we have to minus uh, battery loads and products at basic operation power, but it's still easy to extend the, the lifetime over than ten uh, over than uh, seven years. No, and no need. Actually, we, we don't need to uh, attach a big big uh, battery anymore, and we we, we also can uh, minimize the size of product. Yeah, it's a great great. Uh, advantage in here. And next, I would like to talk about the test resource uh, for us. Yeah, thank you. And as, as you see from the, this table, uh, we uh, put the new product and, and, and the old product in here. The 700s uh, uh, perform a, a better transmission distance from uh, 100 meters up to 150 meters. Even we pair new win uh, door window sensor with the old controller, the transmission distance still have uh, 40 meters increase than before. Yeah, this is a uh, big benefit for uh, for our customer. That, that because our, our customer always always say, okay, can, uh, Duncan, do you have a new product? That because uh, they're, Comf uh, their, their customer or consumer say, uh, I have a very, very big house, but yeah, by now we, I, I think we can fix that. And, and next, I would like to share about the 
the cost saving. Yeah. Uh, from the chipsets, uh, uh, we we can see the we 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 download the data ship from from a website, and it, 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 it more more you can see it is about the hardware resource has a, a big upgrade, just like a, a fresh and SRAM size is bigger than before, and we can get a better MCU performance, and it was a uh, internal uh, OTA memory. And one thing you don't, maybe you don't know, is about the connectivity uh, module that, that um, Michael just mentioned about, we, we do a lot of uh, connected module by ourselves. And this, I, I want to share, share with you. Uh, 700 series doesn't need the uh, external, external memory, and we don't need the uh, soft filter and magnetic B. And totally, we can set uh, 3.4 uh, RMB. This is RMB, but the, the 3.4 RMB equalize uh, 50 cents US dollars, which is huge. And we also can uh, remove the redundant components uh, from the PCB, and which, which means uh, PCB size can be uh, smaller than before and lower SMT cost that, that because we, we, we removed all those uh, components from the PCB. Yeah, uh, here is the whole uh, true and, and the real uh, case for you. Uh, you. If you haven't used the 700 uh, yet, I, I think I, 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 this is a very useful and valuable for, for you. And next, uh, Michael and Joe would like to share about how we turn idea into product and design mindset surround the values. And Michael and Joe, time is yours. Thank you, thank you, Duncan, I appreciate it. Uh, let's uh, continue here, hold on for a second. Uh, I'm gonna get my control squared away here, hold on. Uh, hold on for a second, I'm having some difficulty here. Hold on, I'm trying to get so I can get my controls back to my screen. Okay, I got it. All right, cool. Um, let's go to the next one. All right, so when we're talking about product and product development, so the, the key here is the mindset that you have to have. And so when we hear at Leaders, this is how we think about products and how we develop products. So there's a like a mantra or a motto that we have, and that it, that is that for any IoT product or solution to be successful, that the value that it brings must be equal to or greater than the cost. And that's super important. And so let's take an example of, let's say this is an Echo Smart Home Depot bulb. Actually, it's a bulb that we do for a Home Depot. So that bulb's around what, a dollar something, maybe two bucks, right? So if you go to the store and you wanna buy a smart bulb, now you're gonna spend what, 15, 20 bucks? So you gotta explain the value, right? Because no one's gonna understand why am I gonna spend another you know, 14, 15, 16 bucks for a bulb, but I can just go and use a light switch. So that's really super important. This is how we drive all of our product development is through use cases and the value that it brings. So that's super important. So when we emphasize value, so one of the biggest mistakes in the past was just because things connected to the internet, it's, it would, they thought people thought that would, would sell. And that wasn't the case at all. Actually at the beginning, IoT was slow to gain adoption. That's one of the main reasons. Another thing is that consumers, we care, but consumers don't care about, about protocols, right? They just want stuff to work every time. And don't make it about things, right? We wanna make it about bring the value, like for instance, the door window sensor. So keep your family safe by securing your perimeter. Don't just say, hey, it's a door window sensor, that's a Z-Wave door window sensor, that's, that's great. For us engineers, that's fantastic. But for the end user, it's gotta be something that relates to them, that brings value to them, to keeping their family safe. The other thing is like for water leak sensors, same thing, prevent damage, water damage, and save thousands of dollars. And instead of saying, hey, it's a water leak sensor that has a, uh, that has a probe on it and you can fit underneath the you know, dishwasher, that's great, but what does it do for me? The other thing that's been kind of big and important and really growing in, in the IoT space, especially in North America, are pre-configured, easy to install. So that's something that you really need to accentuate uh, when it comes to bringing value. So 
let's look at the uh, product trends and what's really driving IoT around the world. So just in the US market, life safety, as you know, is the biggest driving factor. So life safety type products followed by lifestyle. Then you have in the European market, it's kind of flipped. It's lifestyle compared to life safety because in Europe, energy costs are higher. So they wanna do things to mitigate that, that, that ener the high energy cost. And then on the Asian side, it's pretty much lifestyle and life safety as well. It's, so what are life safety products? Critical safety or smoke and CO, intrusion, door locks, glass break, cameras, doorbell cameras, lifestyle or energy management like thermostats, smart plugs, you know, smart sockets, lighting, um, home entertainment, uh, and then environmental with temperature humidity and water leak, which is kind of cool. What's kind of interesting with the pandemic and COVID, there's been a new kind of product category that's, that's appeared and that is air quality, which has been around, but now you've got UVC type products um, that are sterilizing the air and, and surface purification, which is, which is uh, that's a big market trend that's happening now. And we see that with our customers. Then um, of course, North America is the most mature market. Uh, Europe is, is the second and Asia is definitely catching up pretty fast. So ideas to products. So how do, how do we do this? So again, we start with use cases, right? And then what's the need? And we emphasize those needs and we take that and then we drive that to defining those needs through specs, right? And the PRD, you know, how do we develop this product? And then we ideate that through uh, 3D printing um, and maybe a lighting lab, if we're doing a lighting product. And then we prototype and move from prototype to test, uh, testing, uh, developing the product, manufacturing, what's the manufacturability, R&D. And if it doesn't work, then we basically start back to square one. What's kind of cool is this is a, um, a small, it's a smart um, home security kit that we developed uh, that's been winning some awards last year, won two big awards last year, been really good. It's a security kit, but it's pre-configured. It's uh, one that, it, what's great about it is that the ergonomics on it, the button design, everything has been really, really nice and it's been winning a lot of awards that way. And that's through our IDC team. So this team we have in, in houses between 50 to 75 people. Um, and they're, again, like I said before, very creative. Um, they come up with some really cool products and then feed that back into our R&D and engineers to develop products. So let's look at product development or ideation and, and uh, development plans a little bit more in detail. So basically phase one, it takes about a month. We're talking product category identification. You first wanna start with that product categories. What, what categories do you wanna play in, but how do we determine that? We do that by looking at the market, look at the opportunity size. Then we look at existing products, maybe your existing products and how we can augment that or existing products on the market. Then we look at maybe new products through, okay, what, what use cases and what, and what value are, can we bring to those use cases? And then what's the market size for that and what's the revenue potential? Then we look at the competitors out there through the landscape, through doing comp shops. We do that quite a bit here at Leaderson. We do that by SKU and by spec and by pricing and by margin expectation. That's also important. And then we do is separate those products that we have ideas about and, and the categories and then we, then we prioritize them. Then we move from there to innovation and product creation. And normally this takes about a week, maybe a little bit more, but this is where we do a lot of bring people together and we just go at it with data gathering and brainstorming, we bring people in together, they're subject matter, matter experts, and we pr bring in decision makers or buyers that are responsible for development and sales. And then we talk about, we issue um, or send out questionnaires and surveys, we use SurveyMonkey a lot internally. Uh, and we get, uh, uh, we ask you know, people that are non-technical about certain products and what they think. And then we'll do benchmarking. Like for instance, we'll take one or two leaders in a product category and, and uh, why are they leaders? Like for instance, let's say you want to develop a new high-end luxury car, let's say kind of sports model and you, you like Porsche. I'm going to compete against Porsche. So I'm going to, you know, maybe Porsche and a high-end Audi or something like that. So that's what I'll do. I'll take that, look at that and see how I can develop a new, a new product. And then, uh, concept uh, presentations. We do that through diagramming and, and again, uh, categorizing, uh, uh, we, we category, uh, categorize that in products, uh, through products and market size. What I like a lot is through mapping and mind mapping. And that's where we take all these different ideas together, throw them on a board and see how those ideas can fix, fit and, and, and match and synergize together uh, to come up with a really cool product. And there's an example of that. Um, so someone come up with, like, hey, maybe we do something for pools. Well, someone said, okay, how about pool security? Well, we know that like 390 people in the U.S. drown per year 
in pools. Well, then how about we come up with something like a waterproof wrist monitor, right? Something that can monitor people when they when they're swimming to see if you know where they're at or location or if, you know if they're not moving. So decision making. So this is where we we basically um, uh, we take those those concepts and we analyze those and then we prioritize those and we rank those one through five. And that's and that's how we start basically through a funnel process, starting with a wide funnel and funneling down. We come down with a just one or two uh, uh, product concepts. From there, we, we engage our ID teams, our R&D teams, our business unit teams, and we do conceptual renderings. We look at the specs and the bomb and the pricing on that. And then we do 3D mock-ups. And then from there we do, uh, what, what's the production schedule look like? How fast can we get this thing to market? And then we do, okay, can we test the darn thing? You know, is it, test, is it testable? Uh, is it repeatable? And the manufacturing and the manufacturability can we make this in, in, in mass quantities? You know, that's big for manufacturers like us. And then of course more. And then the people that need to participate, this is basically the, all the shareholders that are in R&D, sales, customer service, packaging, it could be end users, it could be engineering, ID design, everybody needs to have their input on that. And when you're done, and then you have your new product concept. So here is an example of home security and use cases. So here are the top 10 appealing smart home device expanded, you know, use cases, right? So you could say, hey, you know, uh, let's take the top one, uh, alert someone when someone enters a home. So I could say, okay, I got a motion sensor, it's like before. But the use case behind that and the value is that I alert someone when someone's coming home and that's how you have to approach these products. And then the same thing with alerts when, when alert someone when glass breaks, a glass break center, or maybe alert someone when uh, someone's fallen. So it's a camera with a false sensing algorithm. So this, this is the approach you need to have, and this is how we drive all of our product development. Um, here is an example of something that we did with a door window sensor using some cool technology. So we looked at the FBI statistics, and we saw that 33% that of home burglaries of, it happened on the first story of, of, of homes. We also know that 30% of bur uh, burglaries um, happen when there's a door unlocked or a window unlocked. So, so we said, okay, let's extrapolate that a little bit. So what if you set the alarm and you push your window open? Now you've left a hole into your security. So how do we fix that? How can we uh, uh, you know, cover a number of bases here? And so what we've come up with is, is a door window sensor where you can actually push the window open, press that button, and it sets a localized zone. Uh, and then through an accelerometer, if, that, the window, if, the, if the window pushes open further, it sets off an alarm, and that's how you do it. So you can leave that with a door, a sliding glass door for windows, the whole, the whole gamut. So it's pretty cool. We also looked at, because I used to live in California, now I live in Texas. But when I used to live in California, I, I used to live close to the ocean. Um, and we had wooden houses and the door frames would work because of the moisture, right? Um, and that was always, if you want to do a door window sensor, you can never get good contact. So what we did at Leaderson, we came up with a way to actually raise the magnetic part to where um, it, it would, and to, to elevate that so you had good connections. So these are the kind of things that at Leaderson that we can bring, that we bring to products and that we bring to our customers. All right, so now I think I'm going to hand it off to Joe. And Joe's gonna take over here and uh, talk more in more detail about um, uh, okay. yeah, his products. Well, uh, so I'd like to uh, take over this screen. So uh, wait a moment. Okay, so uh, this slide uh, presents our uh, door window sensor. Uh, actually, we have two versions, bypass, and the other one, we have both bypass and the vibration. Uh, the bypass button, uh, it can support you to uh, disarm the sensor temporarily. So you don't have to go to the uh, keypad to disarm whole system. And uh, we also have the uh, vibration sensor. Uh, vibration sensor means uh, we integrate an accelerometer inside the sensor. So with this kind of uh, uh, algorithm, uh, we can uh, uh, check the vibration very, very uh, precisely. Uh, we also can support different kind of things. Uh, for example, uh, the user maybe they have the uh, uh, metal door window 
or maybe they have the wooden door window. So user maybe they, they got a chance to adjust the sensitivity. And uh, if they die, they also can uh, install the door window sensor on the wine cabinet, or maybe the, the gun cabinet, or the safety box, depends, depends on their needs. And the door window EN grade two, uh, we increase the sensor, uh, the sensor reliability by using the whole technology. As a traditional research, they use the, uh, the, they, got, uh, they use the glass package. So it's very easy to be broken. So when we use the whole technology, uh, it's by semiconductor process, they are more reliable. And we also uh, uh, add some new technology. We, we can uh, immune to the magnetic field interference. And uh, some user cases is about the uh, home security. Uh, the, the, the people maybe they expect uh, when intruder come in, they get alert. But you know, uh, in the American, uh, they are a large percentage of dog, they are over 55 pounds. So you see this table, they are very, very popular dog in America. The top one is the Labrador Retriever. The top two is German uh, Shiver dog. And the, the, the third one, okay, is a golden retriever. So you see, most of them, they are the big size dog. The big dog is about 20 to 40 kilogram. So you may want to have a notification when they get triggered, but actually you don't like uh, the dog or the pet to trigger the motion sensor. So we have to uh, develop a very, very reliable algorithm. Uh, actually, uh, we, we, we have the robot to support the uh, motion sensor testing. We also have two uh, small pet and also the big pet uh, to uh, support the algorithm tuning. So finally, we got our algorithm very, very mature and also very reliable. And the EN grade two uh, motion sensor, we increase the detect detection angle to 100 degrees. We also increase the detect detection range to 12 meters. And we also add some uh, advanced adaptive algorithm and the temperature compensation algorithm. So we make the algorithm very, very uh, reliable. And then we also reduce the, the force alarm. And uh, this slide presents the four in one uh, motion sensor. We start from the motion sensor, and uh, more and more users, they expect they don't have to install too many kinds of sensors in the living room. Uh, they want to know the temperature, they want to know the humidity. So it's better to integrate different kinds of sensors in the same cases. So uh, we have a uh, four in one sensor. Uh, we can uh, use this kind of sensor to make interactive control with some appliance like a heater and like the humidifier. Also the cooler depends, depends on uh, the user needs. And this slide presents a keypad. Uh, we have ergonomic design, so uh, it's very easy to arm and disarm the system. And the user also can uh, use the SOS key uh, to send a penny signal. And uh, we also uh, implement the uh, proximity sensor. So when the user is approaching the keypad, uh, the keypad they will wake up. So, it, so it's very easy and also very friendly for the user. And uh, for the old people and the, the young children, uh, maybe uh, they can carry the remote uh, key fob. With the key fob, they can uh, ask for help for the emerging cases. Uh, we, we, we have an indoor siren, and, but we found uh, the glass break also very popular in the Amarong uh, web online. And uh, we, we try to create more value-added product. So we integrate the glass break into the siren. Uh, the siren normally, uh, they can deter the intruder by 
cheering sound and the glaring alarm light. And uh, when we uh, use the siren, they can be a siren, but they also can be a doorbell. So they cannot support the multi-use. Uh, when we integrate the algorithm of glass break, we also have to reduce the false alarm, like the door box, uh, crying babies, uh, doorbell rings. And basically, we also have this kind of uh, algorithm very mature from our Taipei S lab. So we can integrate this kind of very, very value-added products. This slide presents the water leak user case. So you see, over 40% of water entry home is weighted because of leaks. And uh, about 8.1% of home experience a plumbing leak each year. The plumbing leak costs more than 10 billion in claim paid by US insurance company annually. That's a very, very huge uh, uh, money. So we have a water leak sensor. Uh, this kind of sensor you can uh, put on the floor everywhere because it's by battery. And uh, we, we support the IP54, so it's, it can be worked in some very uh, uh, wet condition area. And we also build in the acoustic alarm, so they can uh, warn you immediately. And we also build in the temperature, uh, so they can uh, have very, very uh, precise and also accurate uh, temperature and the, humidity and the humidity accuracy. Uh, I think the burglary issue is, uh, is very, 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 very have big issue. Well, for the world, worldwide, in UK, you see the table, the burglary rate is almost 2%. And in US, they say uh, they were 1.5 million burglary, according to the FBI report. And the UNCC surveyed over hundreds of convicted burglars. And they say 83% of the respondents say they will work for a security system before they enter a house. And 60% of them would move on to another target if they saw the sign of alarm or camera. So the siren and the security system should be very obviously as possible in order to scare away the intruder to help ensure a family safety. And after triggering the alarm, the sound and the lighting should shock the intruder. So we have very, very good outer siren. You see, uh, the siren, they can deter intruder by jarring alarm sound and the blaring red light. And the volume is very, very uh, high, up to 110 dB at one meter. And uh, we, we, we support the power by DC adapter or by solar panel. And uh, if the intruder, they want to remove the alarm, uh, actually, uh, you will get a notification because we have anti temper design. So that's our very, very good product. Uh, the product part uh, is finished. So get, go back to the Michael, please. Yes, yeah, so, um, so at Leaderson, our motto is building your success in IoT. And that is a, a motto that I came up with. I've been with this company a little over four years, four and a half years now, and I came up with that. Uh, about then. Um, and how we come up with that is because uh, I played, if you see behind me, I played, I have a football helmet back there. I played a lot of college football and then ended up with the Dallas Cowboys in, in uh, 85 for a little while until I blew my knee out. But I played, an, I was an offensive lineman. And so as you know, offensive lineman, if you're uh, American football, you don't get a lot of glory. You don't get the touchdowns. What we do do is you block and you tackle, but you mostly, for me, it was blocking. And so Leaderson's the same way. We want to, we want to block for our customers. We want to make them successful. We want to make them score touchdowns and be famous. And that's how I come up with this, the slogan of building your success in IoT because your success is, is our success. And so we want to help you build your success in IoT. So uh, that is it for our presentation. Mitchell, do you want to, uh, take over and yeah and well, I'd be, be glad to actually uh, Joe Duncan I want to thank you guys 
it's really, really cool stuff. And I think uh, you guys are the masterminds behind some really, really clever products. So uh, thank you both for, for presenting and for staying up, you know, midnight. Well, I don't know that I would do it, but anyway, congratulations for that. Uh, and I think it's also great to, to understand that, that um, Leaderson does so much creative thinking and great product development and they're behind you you can put your brand on top of that and benefit from it. So that's pretty cool. Got some really great products, but I do have a couple of questions. And by the way, if anyone has a question, uh, please, by all means, uh, enter it into the Q&A uh, button on the bottom of your screen. So let me turn on my video and say, yep, uh, here I am. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I have a question. Uh, let's start with the first one here. Um, so what products do you see in the market today? And actually even more compelling, I think, is uh, asking about COVID-19 and how has that affected what these trends might be? Hey, Joe and Duncan, if you know, I could take that. So what we're seeing uh, quite a bit are uh, our customers are wanting air purification. And like I said before, uh, surface and air um, you know, sanitation. And we're seeing that through U, uh, UVC type products, either uh, mobile ones, ones that are built into uh, fans or lights. So that's that's what we're seeing. It's it's pretty it's pretty remarkable. And I think it's needed too, to a certain extent. I would think so. And, and looking at the sensors, uh, some very clever sensors uh, that I could kind of use in my place. Anyway, so what new sensor technologies do you think you should be looking for? Because I think about an experience, I was at a seminar only a couple of years ago, where a company developed an olfactory sensor. In other mm. words, it could sniff, you could actually put it in your cheese drawer, and it would tell you what kind of cheese you had. Now, I'm not sure what the value of that is. But uh, anyway, what kind of new sensor technologies do you think uh, we should be watching for? Joe, Duncan? Can you comment on that? Uh, actually, we also uh, survey some new technology like uh, the uh, microwave, uh, we call millimeter microwave technology. And uh, uh, we also have some uh, technology like IR array. Uh, this also can be uh, a good solution for the sensor products. But of course, the cost is still higher. But I think uh, in the uh, next two or three years, maybe this product also can be used in the 2C environment. And Duncan may, maybe also can uh, have, give us more uh, uh, suggestion about the new technology. Yeah, about, about the privacy is very issue in, in the house. So uh, the reason why we, we developed uh, MiniWeb or the IR array sensor, that's, that, that is because uh, PIR motion sensor is not sensitive enough so uh that, that is the reason why I, and uh, many uh, mm wave uh, technology can uh detect a human uh, occupy in somewhere in the house and very uh, uh and the accuracy is very very high and and uh, uh, uh ira ira sensor is a very very good it's a very good product for uh, commercial building, especially they, they want to uh, counting, uh, they want, want to count how many people pass by here or occupy, how many people are located in, in this air area. Of course, just like uh, Joe just mentioned about it is, uh, this, this, the sensor is still very expensive, but uh, I, I, can, I can proceed uh, maybe uh, next year or, or two years later, and the, 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 the cost will be very down, then we can just uh, uh, push it to, to the consumer market. Yeah. I think that would be fascinating. We look forward to seeing that. So we've seen some really great products that uh, Leaderson makes, which has really been focused on security and obviously leveraging this great technology that Z-Wave offers. Do you guys see Z-Wave moving beyond security products? For, I, I, can, I can jump into that. I, for me, uh, yes, I see that my customers are moving into, because of the 700 series, it really allows us to push into lighting more. Uh, we're seeing that. Uh, and so it supports a high high higher temperature, um, which is kind of nice. And um, uh, so that, that's, that's, a, that's a key. And then I think lighting controls, I see a lot of that um, happening with switches and dimmers and, and various types of things. So 
Um, that's definitely an area I think that's, that's going to be expanded. I also think um, mainly Z-Wave's been in the consumer space, and I'm starting to see this more in the commercial space. It's kind of interesting. <coughs> Maybe I, I can add something. Uh, actually, in in our lab, we we, we can we are we, we consider to put uh, Z-Wave chipset into the uh, IP camera. Yeah, because uh, if everyone want, wants a uh, security kit, why don't we just uh, put the uh, Z-Wave as a, a, a coordinator? You know, be be a, be a coordinator, and, and and when when a camera sees something, or recognize something, and we just trigger or trigger some sensors for just like uh, man, uh, Joe just mentioned about uh, our uh, outdoor siren or in, in, indoor siren, just like that. And we, we, we will plus some uh, AI solution and plus the IP camera and plus the 700 series. And yeah, I, I think you will, you will see it uh, uh, at the end of this, this year. Yeah. And we found uh, some security company uh, they, they, they quite prefer uh, their own proprietary protocol. Uh, but, but it also takes a lot of effort to maintain this kind of infrastructure, uh, like, like protocol stack or uh, security uh, 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 issues. So they have to take care of lots of issues. Uh, from my personal viewpoint, I think uh, JWeb actually, uh, they, they got more supporting from uh, uh, Alliance company. And so they, they, should, they should get more uh, resources. So they, they got more resources to maintain and to support this protocol more robust and more secure. So I think uh, maybe uh, for the security company, the JWeb protocol should be very, very good uh, solution for them. Joe, I think that's a great point. And, uh, you know, of course, recently we, we got UL approval for one of, one of the, uh, the, the products. So I think that's pretty awesome. Um, listen, I think we were just about out of time. And I would really like to thank uh, all of you, really. Certainly, uh, Duncan and Joe for participating at such a wonderful time of night. Uh, Michael, it's always a pleasure to have you. And uh, I think uh, to all the people on the session, uh, really take a long, hard look at Leaderson's product. You guys do some amazing things. So I look forward to seeing more and more coming out of your factories. So thanks guys and thank everyone for joining us. Remember next July 1st, we were gonna take the day off, but uh, be watching your emails for a very exciting session on July 8th. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye.